Uh, I'm talking about uh, preprocessor, preprocessor ASTs. Uh, harder to say than I thought. Uh, ASTs stands for abstract syntax tree. I'll go into uh, that more if you're, you're not familiar with it, but I just thought I'd get that out of the way up front. Um, I work at Stripe now, uh, so uh, that's outdated. Um, I think I have one more bulleted list, but my style's a little different, and uh, it's actually not different at all from the way I used to do presentations, so it's completely useless information for you. Uh, anyways, uh, abusing and hacking is, is a term I'm using in this presentation to mean uh, using something for a reason outside of its intended uh, purpose. Uh, oh, that's the correct size. How about this HTML slides for the win? Um, so this is, uh, I think, some SAS or SCSS um, specifically. And uh, it's kind of like a fairly uh, declarative syntax. So what is there to hack? What is there to abuse uh, with just some text that turns into CSS, right? So uh, it's not necessarily an obvious place. When you're talking code, you can say, like, oh, I can inject this here or inject that there. But uh, you're limited by syntax here. And it's not necessarily even like, uh, I guess it is Turing complete. Uh, especially with like checked and stuff. I think Ryan's got to talk about that. But so, so the place that we're going to try and inject ourselves is in the compilation step. Um, so how does this uh, SAS, so it's just a smaller part of, of this same thing, turn into actual CSS, right? So how do we take that variable, pull it out, and then put it in the right place to output actually decent CSS, parsing and compiling? So how does parsing work? So let's narrow it down even further. We just have a single variable declaration uh, in SAS. Um, and naturally, SAS is uh, Ruby. Um, and I don't really program Ruby. So most of mine will be in JavaScript. So sorry if you're a Ruby fan. Uh, so parsing, uh, I, can, I can talk about it on a, on a high level here. And that's just like, know about the syntax rules of the language and go through and assign what everything is. This is a variable declaration, or this is uh, even more specifically a, a string or a value or a semicolon, right? Uh, figure out all those different parts. Uh, so inside this little little guy, we have the, the variable prefix. We can look for the dollar sign. And we know that, hey, this is about to be a variable. And we know it's going to be a variable until we hit like white space or a semicolon. And in this case, we get the variable name. It's blue. And then we hit a semicolon. Then we can have as much white space as we want. Uh, and then we get some random string, and that's going to be the value. Uh, most of the time, CSS uh, will let you put anything in there as long as it's not like the semicolon or another colon or something like that. So any non-invalid character there is going to be the value. So it might not actually be anything to the browser, but it would be valid. Uh, and then uh, obviously the, the rule delimiter. So this is how this would parse down uh, whenever SAS was, was pulling this in. Uh, more specifically, uh, it, it does that programmatically. So it's going to go through and check every possibility of each thing, um, of each character that it gets to. Uh, and so this is the, the most simple parser that I could write on a single slide. Uh, you have a result um, array, and you just want to push each token onto the array. So you say, uh, I hit a semicolon, push the semicolon token, which in this case is the string semicolon. Probably would not work out well. Um, but you, you go through, and then you, you end up with a list of each of the tokens. So rather than having just random text strings, you know, like, hey, this is a variable, this is a, a rule delimiter, this is a value, and this is a rule uh, ending statement. Um, more realistically, most people are going to write uh, a parser expression, um, a generator, a peg, uh, a parser expression generator. Is, is what this is. And you don't have to know anything about this. I just wanted to make sure I was being realistic. Uh, you kind of define that, like, hey, a class is a dot followed by an identifier. And then whenever I get this, just give me this object back. And then a computer will generate a parser for you. So you don't have to write all those like reverse while loops and do a look ahead and all that stuff. So uh, if you are looking into writing your own parser, I'd probably suggest starting at a parser expression generator. So you just write the grammar. Uh, and uh, it generates the parser. Much more simple. Uh, so when you're done, you need to represent the code as data instead of pure text. So now we have somewhere in between there. We have like, here are what all of our symbols are. We have tokens, uh, if you will. Uh, 
So, so this first becomes this. So we have the, the variable start, which is that dollar sign. We have a string, uh, which is blue. Uh, that's technically like the variable name. And then we have like the equals operator, which in CSS is the colon. Um, the string is, is the value that we have there. And then we have a rule end, a rule ender. Ender's game coming out soon. Uh, sponsor. Uh, but uh, we add structure. Uh, so if you go back here, uh, you can see that it's, uh, it's a very small CSS file. It actually would output nothing on, on the other end. Uh, but we have that, and we turn it into this. We say, this is a single node, and inside of it, it has two nodes inside of it. And that is a var name and a, and a value. Uh, and so now we have this, this idea of th this is a single node, and inside of it are two smaller nodes. Uh, and the way the entire CSS file is going to parse out is into these leaf nodes, right, like this. So you'll always have like a variable name or a CSS value or a CSS property. And you can go deep into your, your tree, uh, which we'll talk about in a second, and everything reduces down into these very simple things. They're just put all in a list together uh, or in a, in a tree together, uh, depending on how deep you go. CSS is actually not very deep. Uh, uh, SAS and Compass and all that stuff, they actually allow you to nest a lot further. And so when you're parsing preprocessors, you, you actually do see like larger nesting. And so you have a CSS syntax tree inside of a CSS syntax tree inside of a CSS syntax tree. Uh, so this is uh, more realistic uh, for um, a, an, another very small one, but it actually would output something. Uh, we say like our, our outer object is a style sheet. And inside of it, it has some declarations, right? So style sheets have declarations. Uh, first thing we do is we do that, th the, 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 we set blue uh, before, so I've omitted that section so this fits on mostly a slide, pretty close. Um, and so we've set that variable, and then we set the, the left and right, and so we know what the, the name is, and we, we know what the value is. And then we have a declaration, and we say the selectors here are p and dot stuff. Uh, and so that would, whenever you compile that, that would be p, comma, dot stuff. And then there would be the brackets. And inside that are the rules. And the rules, you have a list of rules. And so this is just going to be a list of rule nodes. Uh, and so in this case, it's color and value. Um, so uh, this would just have a single value. Uh, if we wanted more rules, we could have you know, background uh, and then have, have that whole set of rules for background and things like that. Uh, visually, this is. Uh, what you might write uh, in SAS or Stylus um, or less. Um, I, th I think the AND syntax works in all of them, maybe. Someone probably knows. Uh, but in this case, we're just saying we want to modify the hover pseudo class of the outer class. So this is not valid CSS at this point, but it is valid SAS. And we're just saying, I want the original style of A, but I just want to change the hover case um, for uh, to be underlined. In this case, I'm trying to simplify, so that would actually be kind of silly uh, because you're not sharing anything uh, in the long run, but it's simple. Uh, so this becomes this. So this is uh, our, our object. At the bottom is the style sheet. We have a body node and we have an A node. And inside of that, we have rules. The color is black, one is text decoration, and then the hover is a new level more nested. So if, you go back here, you can see even in the code, the brackets kind of represent that nesting. Uh, and that is an abstract syntax tree. So uh, it's not, uh, an AST is a, kind of a scary word, and, and everyone kind of blank stare at you uh, unless they, they've worked with them before. Um, but it's actually uh, an easily breakdownable word. That's totally also a hard to break down word. Um, but abstract means that there's no rules. You can make them however you want. Uh, it really should just be like arbitrary syntax tree because it's, uh, it's just like whatever you want to do is cool as long as it's a tree. Uh, syntax implies that it's about syntax. So if you're parsing code, then it's a syntax tree. Uh, and tree just means that like there are objects within objects. So it's like a very, very vague term. And it almost means nothing other than that it represents some sort of structure for code. Um, but these are generated by every preprocessor, uh, or at least most. So what can we do with this section? So we no longer are reading text 
and we don't even have valid CSS yet. So we have this object that represents our preprocessor data. Uh, and data is really important there. Um, we can change the data. We can read the data. Uh, we can add to it. We can do anything we want uh, at that point as data. It's, it's much harder to regex in extra rules and regex out uh, rules that you don't want uh, than it is to just say, like, hey, change the rule of the third node to this new thing or add another rule. Uh, it's a declarative way in code to add things in rather than uh, regex and, and string position and stuff. So uh, there's a compilation phase uh, after this. So what it'll do first is reduce your preprocessor AST into a CSS AST. So you have uh, this AST. This is the data. You have two nodes here. The first one is you're setting a variable blue to this blue color that we've been using. Uh, and then we have a rule somewhere later that, that wouldn't actually be that. Well, I guess you can set a variable inside of a, a declaration. Um, you have a rule, and it sets the color to that variable named blue. And so this is not, this is not a valid CSS uh, node, because there are no variables in CSS yet. Um, and so we couldn't compile this into CSS. But what the compiler does first is reduces the AST from the preprocessor into one that is valid in CSS. So it would take this store that blue was the variable, and then reduce it uh, to just say, hey, this node is the color of that color. And so you no longer have the invalid variable node, and now you have a totally valid CSS node. So you could compile that to colon or color colon that blue color, and that would be totally valid. So it does this recursively um, until uh, you get back to a valid CSS AST, and then you compile that to text. Uh, so our reduction goes from this to this, and uh, it goes leaves to trunk. And I call that up the tree, but uh, that's kind of a weird leaves to trunk would be down the tree. I don't really know. I think uh, there are people who disagree with me. Uh, especially really angrily on Twitter. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the recap of how that compilation step works is first it takes this block and it changes it into something like this. And I know that's ugly. You don't have to actually be able to read that. This is a declaration. Uh, it's got color in it. And then there's declar oh, declaration. Uh, so uh, that's a special type of CSS node. <laughs> it's too advanced. Uh, but uh, so, so you have uh, essentially a declaration inside of a declaration here. And that's invalid in CSS. It's valid in SAS. And so what you do is you first reduce that to three separate declarations. Uh, and you'll notice the A and A hover are now mixed in the second declaration. And A hover has its own third declaration with the extra two characters of white space that are bugging me. Um, so, And then you convert that to text. Uh, and since CSS knows how to take that AST and turn it into text, that's a very simple uh, uh, compilation step. Uh, and so this is what uh, this text from before. This was our original stuff. We have the extra inside declaration, and we do those few things. And now we have two separate declarations that make sense in CSS. So in words, it takes one type of text, converts it into a known but arbitrary data format. Then it converts that data into a different but arbitrary and known data format. And then it converts that back into text. And that's the entire preprocessor uh, world in a nutshell. And so all of you should be able to just write preprocessors now. Uh, and that's the end of my talk. Um, <laughs> So this is, uh, th these are the phases. Uh, you could probably break each one of these down into to a lot smaller parts. But really, the only hard part is that. Uh, the rest is kind of like solves computer science-y stuff, right? It's easy to write parser expression grammars and like compilers. Uh, we've got a lot of them, and we can, we can do better, I'm sure. But uh, there are tools that you can kind of just use off the shelf to do text to data and data to text. Uh, you have to kind of write the, the bindings, but that's about it. So the only thing that, like, in SAS or, or in Stylus that, that people are doing really is focusing on data one to data two. What data can I take in to convert to this regular CSS data that we know about? 
So the hacking part of this is the, is the fun part. So what can we do? Uh, data one is very interesting because you usually have the most amount of data. You're usually reducing data into data two. Data two could be interesting as well uh, if you need to know something about the CSS structure. Uh, and I'll use it a little bit in a, in a demo. But uh, data one has the most amount, uh, the most dense information that you, that you can have. Uh, so just uh, my, my other bulleted list here is uh, some things you can do with data one that I thought of off the top of my head that I won't necessarily actually show you how. But you can go through those leaf nodes and you say, like, oh, I use that variable. Uh, let me just count up all the times that that shows up. And you can say, like, oh, it turns out I never used these 10 variables that I declared at the top of my file. And that can be uh, interesting. Uh, you can change variables in real time. You say, well, I know I set this as this, but I'm going to go change half of them to a new value um, just by replacing the dot value of that node. And then when it compiles, it doesn't know that you changed something. You can reduce duplicate code. You can go look for duplicate selectors and, and rules and say, like, well, let's get rid of these. You could write a linter. Um, I think uh, Nicole uh, wrote one of those. Um, and uh, you can output statistics and, and do all sorts of fun stuff. So I'll show you some, some fun stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so as long as data one is valid when you're done, it doesn't matter what you did to it. So you could completely replace it with a new AST and then compile it, and it would just compile to your new AST. I'd probably be ill-advised. So here's my first uh, example, the importantize uh, AST modifier. Uh, so you, you take in data, which is uh, an AST, um, and you usually have a type on everything because that's how you know what to do with it. So we check to see if it's a rule. If it's a rule, we change its value to have important at the end. Um, is that, does the bang go there? Is it on the other side? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Re really? Is that? Man, um, I'm sick, so I'll blame that. <laughs> Uh, no, it goes on that side, right? Someone tell me. No, it doesn't? All right, man. CSS, not a fan. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so you, you'll go through uh, this rule and you'll say, if this is a rule, well, which it is because we're going through this rule, uh, you'll add important to the value. And then whenever it gets printed out, that'll have important at the end. So if it already had important, uh, you're kind of screwed. We didn't check. Uh, and then we'll say, uh, Everything is recursive in a tree, right? So you'll say, uh, my children might be rules too if I'm not a rule. Uh, and then, so go through each node recursively down the tree. And if it's a rule, change the value to have important at the end of it. Um, and really, in recursive functions, you should like return it and stuff like that. But in JavaScript, we're passing around the same object, and it'll just work. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's that whole one. Here's uh, the opposite, uh, the undo intern work uh, AST. So we're going to go straight into the children uh, of the AST, and we're going to see if uh, the, the child is a rule uh, and it matches on the string important at all, um, then just return null uh, and essentially delete that node. So if, if a rule has important in it, no longer put it in the set of rules that we're going to send uh, to the compiler. Uh, otherwise, uh, return the child, uh, and then do that recursively. And then we'll take out all those uh, null rules at the end with compact, uh, which is uh, a non-standard array function that I'm allowing you to trust me on. Uh, and those rules, if there were 10 rules before and six of them had important in them, now you have four rules. And when they get compiled, just the four rules come out. So you have both ways to turn on globally importance or to remove any rule with an important. You could also just remove the important tag, which would probably maybe be reasonable, but just write them. Don't write them to begin with. So this is every preprocessor. Every preprocessor has this phase. Um, this is not unique to stylus or SAS or anything that we're doing uh, up here. Uh, it is varying levels of difficulty to actually um, get into this phase, though, in different uh, preprocessors. Rework is a pretty new one uh, by TJ uh, Holloway J. Chuck. It's close enough. Uh, 
Vision Media, and uh, he, he wrote Stylus originally, and uh, Rework was kind of like based on what he learned from that, he wrote this, uh, and it is essentially just uh, like exposing the AST layer. As soon as I submitted this talk, maybe like two days later, he put this out, and I was kind of bummed, but it actually made the demo way easier, so I was no longer bummed. Uh, is that a kerning nightmare or what? Um, so let's go a little more real world. Uh, so compilation of styles is pretty fast, right? Like I can compile like that 10 line uh, CSS or SAS file in like milliseconds, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, but it's not fast if you want like a slider that changes a variable, right? You can never hook this onto an unchange event and have things update on the page. You had to send a request back to the server, have it compile, send the file back up, re-inject, recalculate styles. That would never work. You'd have to have it on like a second, you know, maximum, minimum uh, delay on, on the change events. So uh, if you're building a theme builder, which say what you will about the real worldedness of that, but I had to do it. Um, you want a color picker and you want a size slider for some of your variables. You don't necessarily want to say like make this thing bigger. You want to say like make my base color different, right? You want it to change all the places you're using base color in your code, and that's signified by variables in your CSS files. And you want to do it in real time, and the only way to do that is to avoid recompiling, uh, because a compile step is just going to take too long. So uh, we'll go to my demo. So we have uh, this fun page. You can actually 75 it. All right, so we're running this. Uh, this is a page with a little bit of CSS. I can show you my example CSS file. This is the myCSS um, file, literally a dot myCSS. It is my own rework CSS preprocessor, which has uh, one feature, which is variables. So I've turned on variables. So I'm using BG color for this background, border radius, big border radius, um, that type of stuff. And then in my index.html file, I have uh, a header and a subheader. And then I style that with, with those things. And then uh, somewhere that isn't open, I pass the data for what those variables should be. And I won't try and open that right now. Uh, so we have values for this. And uh, this comes out as CSS on the other end. So now you can see the values. So this is example.css. It comes out the other end. Precompiled, actually precompile on load. Uh, so each time it'll do that. And you can see you have a background color here. We have uh, more background colors. And so those are getting set. What I also added was an endpoint to add .json to the end of every single uh, uh, CSS file. And what that'll do is it'll take the AST, go find every variable, and then reduce uh, essentially flip the file on its head. So what we have here is data that says this is the BG color variable, this is the app width variable, this is the border color. And in here we have a list of selectors that end up using this variable and then the rules that they use it on. So we know that dot .container contains a border radius where the value is big border radius. And that seems cool, like we now have a list of all our variables, so that was pretty easy to get uh, based on, on uh, just going through the nodes and saying, is this a variable node? And if it is, add it to this list. And then you kind of have to do some uh, hacky stuff in order to get the selectors back out, uh, depending on your preprocessor. Um, but we can pull in that data here. Man, that got way bigger. We can pull in that data here, and we have this thing I've injected on the top. And I, I have all the code for this for you that I'm not going to walk through, uh, because that's a fun demo. Uh, but Essentially, what we're doing here is we go through those variables, we list them out here, and then based on what they say width or color, I'll give you the correct picker for them, and then also tell you how many times they, they were used. And so BG color is used twice, uh, and we know the selector, and we know the rules. So I'll use the selector real fast to show you uh, the, three pages on the, the three places on the page that BG color actually gets uh, used, or at least which elements. So this is being used on the HTML element, the body element, which I guess starts at the top of this thing since I have a margin on it. Um, and then also BG color is used as the text color for leaf them alone, uh, which is more hilarious than you guys gave it credit for. <laughs> uh, and so 
we, we're using a single variable. It shows up in two selectors, and it's on three elements. And this is data that you can never see, like, where are my variables being used in my page? Uh, that's pretty cool. You, you see, like, app width is used on this. You see border color, border radius, all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, but also, we can, uh, we can inject new styles. We know the selector, we know the rule, and we know our new value that we want to try out. So we can pop up a color picker and say this is BG color and just inject a totally new style. Like, so we're not recompiling, we're injecting a new style, like a style element, and we'll put the selector, bracket, rule, colon, and then whatever we're picking from this color selector on a change event. So we can do this straight off of our variables. So this is completely generated from the data inside of your AST. You don't have to program this somewhere else. We can add a new variable to our file. And it will automatically show up in this list. So we can come in and change the app width to something that's more CSS friendly. Change the border to invariably, if you give someone complete control, it looks like this every time, right? This is my favorite. Doesn't it, like, that trips me out, man. <laughs> I'm at like NyQuil right now, but that's, that's good anyways. Uh, and then we can get a better header color in there. And so that's, that's my one example of some crazy stuff uh, that you can do. Uh, I have this available at this URL, um, talk slash abusing dash preprocessor dash ASTs. And you can see that uh, you had to run an express app in order to do that uh, compilation step. But you can kind of see it's all well commented on on how that works, but um, thank you guys. <laughs>